Hi, Amy with AJ's Vintage Designs and Fashion Toppings here. And I'm, today for my Trash to Treasure, I'm gonna tackle this lamp. This lamp has seen its better day and I wanna give it an updated look. It's Right now it's filthy, so I need to clean it first and I'm just gonna use a, a household cleaner to clean this up, it's, it's filthy. If you have a, like a sheer fabric lampshade, you can dip it into a bathtub full of warm water and wool light and then rinse it, that will work. But this is a paper shade and so I need to use a sponge with water and control the amount of moisture that's on it because I don't want to damage it. But if you have one of the sheer fabric ones that don't have the liner on the inside, then like I said, fill your bathtub full of warm water, put a little bit of wool light in there, you can, you know, bounce it up and down and soak it to get all that dirt out of it, rinse it and you're good to go. I've done that on several lampshades that are fabric with no linings and it worked out great. But this one has a lining so I need to use a sponge. And right now I'm just using just a little bit of warm water with a sponge to clean my lampshade because I'm gonna be painting the lampshade. And so I don't wanna put any harsh chemicals on this because I don't want any of the chemicals being left in the weave of this. It's kind of like, um, kind of like burlap, but I don't want any of that cleaning product to get caught in any of the weaves of the burlap. So I'm just using warm water to clean it for now because I will be painting it. Okay, it's filthy. <laughs> so let me go ahead and clean this whole lamp up and we'll come back and we'll start painting. Okay, this lamp was filthy, dirty water. Okay, and you noticed, I don't know if you noticed or not, but when I was cleaning, I was cleaning in the downward motion, pulling the dirt down one direction. That's how I was cleaning it. I lift up my sponge and I pull it down. Just pulling all the dirt down so I had the debris at the bottom and I can just clean it off. Okay, this I'm going to clean with a normal household cleaner. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and spray this down with the household cleaner, get it nice and clean, it's filthy. Okay, now that I've cleaned it with my cleaner, I'm going to just spritz it with some water. Not getting water up here in the electrical. And this is not plugged in either. <laughs> okay, next I'm just gonna spray a rag and get it wet. And I'm gonna wipe off with just water any, clean, any cleaning product that might be left behind. We don't want any residue left on here that would keep the paint from sticking to the glass. You don't want anything to you know, create a barrier so that the paint can't um, adhere to the glass. So I'm just taking a little bit of water on a rag and wiping off any cleaning residue that is left behind. Okay. Okay, next. Since this is a slippery surface, this is a really kind of a glossy lamp and it's made of glass, you can see the sheen on here. I am going to be uh, priming it with Dixie Belle's Slick Stick. Now the Slick Stick is a bonding primer and it works great. I use it all the time. I, I use it for any surface that is um, glossy, slippery, for mica, glass, metal, anything that I'm worried about my paint scratching off with wear and tear. And lamps do, even though they sit on your, uh, on your nightstands or on your tables, they don't get a lot of wear and tear, but um, over time, you just, you never know. So I'm putting slick stick on it just to be safe. And I'm using uh, the Dixie Belle Oval Small Brush. And I missed it just a little bit. And I'm applying this bonding primer. Like I said, Slick Stick is a bonding primer. So I'm using a bonding primer just so that I'm not gonna risk any areas not lasting with wear and tear. So I'm gonna apply the bonding primer first. And the reason I have my brush uh, misted with a little, I mean, it's not wet, I just misted it with a little bit of water. And um, I did that to reduce brush strokes because we're gonna be painting over this. Okay, so let me go ahead and prime this lamp and I'll be back.
Okay, now that I got the primer on here, you see I did add some tape as well, um, just so that I could speed things up. I didn't have to be so careful around the electrical. I did um, put some painter's tape around where the cord goes into the base and some up here, so that it just made it faster. I didn't have to worry about being so meticulous to get around here. But I do have one coat of the primer on here, the slick stick. I'm gonna let this dry, and then we're gonna go ahead and pick colors. And I'm not going to prime my lampshade. That, that we're just going to tackle it right with paint because it's not a slippery surface. So we'll be doing the lampshade as well, but first we're gonna tackle this. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start on the lamp. I'm gonna be painting the lamp cotton. This is Dixie Belle's brightest white. Now you can use any color you want. I'm just choosing to start with the, the cotton, which is the brightest white, just to give it that crisp, clean look. So let's go ahead and get started. You will need to have a misting bottle or a water bottle nearby. We're gonna mist the surface really well so it's damp. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want the paint to, I'm gonna get my brush wet too. I want the paint to be um, able to set in all these fibers because this is like a burlap. And if the paint is too thick, it's gonna get clumps in each one of the fibers. So I want it to be nice and thin. And so I'm going to, because this, like this is like a fabric burlap material. And I'm kind of doing it in circular motions. And it goes on nicely because that area is damp. So the water kind of thins out the paint and lets it soak right into the fibers of the burlap. Now, if I wouldn't have gotten it wet, the paint would sit on top of the surface a little bit more and wouldn't you know, soak in as well. So that's why we wet it down. It's like painting fabric. And we'll just keep misting as we go. If the paint does not soak into the weave, just get it wet again. Water is the key. And in circular motions, that works it into the fiber. See how nice and clean that's gonna look? Okay, so I'm gonna keep working around, wetting this, that section. And you know you've wetted enough when you are going in circular motions if the paint is getting into the weave, the fibers of the, of the lampshade. If it's not, let's see if I can zoom in. Oh, that's too bright white. If you get speckling where it's not getting into the fibers, it's sitting on top, but you have like a lot of speckling that shows it's not getting down the fibers, then you just wanna mist that area. That means there's not enough water on that area. Dip your paintbrush again and keep working. Circular motions, working it into the fibers. And I'm gonna work, I'm gonna do this all the way around the lampshade, spraying with water and then adding the paint in circular motions. It might take more than one coat, depending on the shape and um, you know the, the weave on the fabric that's on your lampshade and the color that you're trying to cover. So let me go ahead and let's get this all covered. We'll come back and I'll tell you what's next. Well, I have the first coat on the lampshade. I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna see if there's any areas that need to be touched up in case some areas are a little bit th thicker or thinner than others. So I'm gonna let it dry and I'm gonna come back and we'll put a second coat on and I'm going to then also tackle the base of this lamp next as soon as these two dry. Okay, I'll be back. My slick stick has dried. Already it looks better. <laughs> I decided on the color mint julep. This is a gorgeous green and uh, I thought it'd be pretty with the white. So we're gonna go ahead and paint this the mint julep. I just have the one coat to slick stick on there. Okay. Oh, that's gonna be a gorgeous color. You got easy it is to update a lamp. Right now my lampshade is drying with my first coat of the cotton on it. And now 
adding the mint julep. Okay, well there is one coat. It looks pretty darn good. I might not even need a second coat. I'm gonna let this dry and see how it looks and then we're gonna go and tackle the rest of the lampshade. Okay, I'm back and I'm gonna work on the lamp. And what I found is, I mean, I had pretty good coverage, but you can kind of see a slight difference. This is two coats, this is one coat. Very slight difference, just a little bit of darkening. So I could get away with just doing the one coat, but I'm gonna show you a trick that I found that just, for the second coat, it's just so much easier. The first coat, we sprayed the water on and then we got the paint on there and we're using a wet brush. Now for the second coat, since we already have paint on here, what I did is I did a 50-50 water to paint ratio. It's, it's basically, look at, it's just a wash. But it's a 50-50 ratio from paint to water. So this is the cotton, once again, same color as used before, but I did a 50-50 water to paint ratio and watch how the second coat, how easy it goes on. Because I already have a coat of paint on there. It just goes on so much easier. So two coats and this lampshade will be done. You can see there's a slight difference between the first coat and the second coat. Like I said, I could, could have got away with just having just the one coat, but I'm putting the second coat on just so it's nice, crisp, and white. But if not, I could have stopped without doing this step, but I think it just adds just that little bit of pop. Okay, I'm gonna finish this up, and then we're gonna start decorating the base and this lampshade. We're gonna try to do something special with it. Okay, I'll be back. Here's how it looks so far, but it still needs a little bit of pop of color. And I was thinking about adding another color to the base or doing some trans floral transfers on here, but I decided I wanted to keep this simple, and after I top coat, it's gonna have a nice sheen to it. So I decided, let's address the lampshade. Let's add our little pop of color on the lampshade. So I'm gonna take that off. And I decided what we were gonna do is do a little stenciling on this. Cause it's such a pretty white, but I think I'm gonna put a stencil wrapping around and I'm gonna be using, since we painted in the mint julep, I'm gonna be doing kind of an ombre with mint julep. I'm gonna use mint julep and then I'm gonna keep adding some white to it to lighten it. And I'm gonna do a mandala transfer on here. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I went through my little stash of stencils and I did find this is the only one that I had that would fit. This is a little mandala stencil. So what I'm gonna be doing is you can either use painter's tape to hold your stencil on or you can use um, Krylon's Easy Tack. And this is a repositionable adhesive, so you can spray this on the back of the stencil, which is what I'm gonna do, and then I'll just keep moving it. Gotta shake it up. And you've got to spray it. Okay, make it tacky. Okay, and then position it in the center dog hair out of there. Okay, and then if you're, if you're questioning as to like where your placement's gonna be when you keep moving it around, I'm gonna make a little line on here. Okay, I'm gonna make a little line with my Sharpie. I'm just gonna, on my stencil, make a dot so I can see you know, where it lines up with an edge. So when I put the stencil on the next section, I'm lining it back up exactly the same. Okay, so I have my adhesive on here. Okay, so that's ready to go. Okay, I'm just gonna take a little spoonful of mint julep on here. Okay. Okay, and then I'm adding a little bit of white. And this white is not the same white I use in the shade. This is a little bit um, darker of a white. It's called drop cloth. And I'm, I'm just doing that so it shows up a little bit better. 
on the pure white here. But you can use the same white because we'll be mixing. You'll see in here in just a second. Okay, so I have my two colors on here. I've got the mint julep and then I have white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to mix them together. I'm gonna start off with just the mint julep by itself. And I'm going to just I put my hand in here so I can make it stiff. Just gonna pounce with my little rubber pouncer randomly and use very little paint because you can always go over with more paint. If you put too much on, it'll start bleeding underneath. And I put my hand inside to make it firm. I'm just getting it in the darkest color, which is the mint julep by itself. I'm just getting that on first. Kind of putting it around randomly. And if you have a stencil that has a lot of details that you might not want on your fabric, like let's say if, if I don't want this design up here and I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I'm gonna accidentally hit it, put a piece of tape over it to hide that section so that you don't accidentally get paint underneath here if that's the part you don't want, if you don't want this design on here. If you're close to an edge, put painter's tape along the edge and that will protect you from going off your stencil so you don't have to worry about it. We want this to be fun and stress-free and a great way to upcycle our old things or decorate our homes on the dime with thrifted things. Okay. So I got some, oopsie. I got some green randomly around here. Now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking a little bit of the green and a little bit of the white and blend them together separately so that we get a lighter, a lighter form of the mint julep. It's gonna be a lighter shade. So it kind of gives us that ombre look. And then so we're gonna dab that in between these areas that we have the darker color on. And you can incorporate more colors if you want to add like you know blues and greens and just make it all sorts of colors i've done that and that turns out beautiful very tie-dye looking okay and if we need to pop a little just a little bit of plain white over it in certain areas you can do that there's no wrong answer or no wrong way or it's it's all up to your creativity how you want to mix the colors we're just dabbing and if, there we go being careful anywhere that the stencil isn't sticking just being very careful around those areas to dab not to push the paint underneath the stencil okay and what you can see these lighter shades in here that's what I want so even though you can't can't see my paint down here I'm just grabbing some, just some plain white by itself now and just randomly dispersing the white paint on top of the green. That's why it's okay if you use the same color white as you did on here. It's okay because you're doing it on top of the, the green that you just put on. See that? And then I can put some more green. So you're just, you know, putting the colors on randomly, just pouncing them all over. You just don't want to have too much of one color in one area. You want it to be, you know, have a nice little flow to it as far as changing of colors. Putting some more white on here. Randomly over the green in the areas. Then some more green. Okay, I think I got everything. Okay, let's see how that looks. Okay. Peel it back. They look pretty. Okay, I'm gonna keep adding these all the way around. And I shouldn't have to spray this again, but. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and keep adding these all the way around and I, I remember my little marks here where I can line up right along my edges so I can keep this straight. Okay, I'm gonna keep going all the way around here and then I'll be back when I'm done. I kind of figured out a trick that was easier. I actually just slid the lampshade on my leg. That way I have some support underneath of it. So when I'm pouncing, I'm not causing any creases in my lampshade. So I just wanted to add this little tip in. I found that um, there, see having the pressure of my leg underneath here, I'm not causing any crinkles. So I don't accidentally crease my lampshade. So I just wanted to show this little trick that seems to be working out better and getting better results on the stencil by doing this. But I just thought I'd share this little trick with you. Make sure, if I make sure my leg is underneath it, it holds the stencil much more firm. Okay, I think the last thing, I'm not gonna do anything to, to here, I think the last thing I'm gonna do, and then it'll be all finished up, is I'm just going to paint a little stripe with a little craft brush. Just rubbing it into the fabric all the way around the border, just so I can have, you know, a little finished stripe. So I'm just gonna do this. Just using a little craft brush, just rubbing it all along the edge here. And it's kind of like a raised little ribbon that's already on here, so it's easy. I don't have to do any taping off. Just painting that little stripe all the way around. Okay, I'm gonna finish this all up and I'm gonna be at the end and I'll show you how it turns out and get it staged. I think it's adorable and it was so fun and easy. Okay, okay, well there she is and I decided that, I mean I kinda like the look of the mat, but um, if you're using the Dixie Belle paints, you don't have to seal. If you wait 30 days, it cures in 30 days and then it's tough. You can seal with a water-based sealer. Uh, Dixie Belle's got several. They've got the, their clear coats in satin, flat, and gloss. And then they also have Gator Hide, which is a waterproof, um, water repellent top coat. But this is looking really pretty right now. So I'm just going to do the easy way out. I'm gonna do easy peasy spray wax. And when this dries as well, I, if I think that, you know, if I have a lot of decorations up here, I can soften this area using wax, but like I said, Dixie Belle paints do not have to be sealed. So I'm not gonna worry about sealing the top part up here. I think it's pretty. And I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it like that. I am gonna add some spray wax on here just for a little bit of sheen. I don't want a lot of sheen, but just a little bit of sheen. So with the Easy Peasy Spray Wax, you shake it up and it's simply, you just spray it on. And if you ever want to update like if it starts to look a little dull over time, you just spray more on it and buff. I just, you can see I sprayed it all over so it's nice and wet, letting it soak in. Now you wouldn't wanna do this step until your paint is completely dried. Now I painted this yesterday, so it, I'm, I'm good to go with the clear wax today. But I'm letting it soak in for a little bit and then I'm gonna take a little sock, put it on my hand, a lint-free sock, preferably white so that you don't have any dyes or anything that could, you know, dye in, bleed onto your piece. And then I'll just rub it off. Socket lint, or I had dust on it. Okay. Well, there you go. I sealed it with the Easy Peasy 
spray wax because it dries in 30 minutes and it cures in six hours, so that's what I like about it. But if you wanted uh, even more protection than a wax, you can put a clear coat on it like Dixie Bell's top coats. They're clear coats in satin, flat, or gloss. Um, but today I just chose to use the Easy Peasy Spray Wax. Uh, one tip is that if your paint isn't going on very smooth, wet it. Add more water to it so that it's thinner and it can be absorbed by the fabric. So water is the key. So if you think it's going on kind of dry, add some water to it. And there you go. I love how it turned out. This is Amy with AJ's Vintage Designs and Fashion Toppings with another trash to treasure. Okay, don't forget to check out my Facebook page at AJ's Vintage Designs and my blog at www.ajsvintagedesigns.com. All of the uh, products that I use are down in the description box. You can check that out as well. Okay, well until next time, I hope you have a great day. Mm -hmm.